Welcome to Something Special Designs by Tina Williams, where I create French country, cottage, shabby, and farmhouse decor with mainly thrifted items. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you'll know when I upload future videos. Hi everybody, this is Tina. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to be using this slick stick today, and I haven't ever used it before. This is a primer to use on ceramic, and I am using it because people suggested it. I haven't really had a problem with the Dixie Belle paint chipping off, so or the DIY paint, but I'm going to try it. And I'm going to also try it on this little ceramic bird. Uh, I got this off of Amazon, but quite a long time ago. This is a silver platter that I thrifted, quite a few of them for just a few dollars. And I really love this uh, pattern in it. So I thought I would use it for a painted uh, tray. And these are three little feet that I purchased off of Amazon. And I'm gonna be adhering those to the tray later to make it a little riser. So I put some slick stick, slick stick on it. So now I'm using my DOS clay and I will be actually making several molds in this uh, video. I'm using the molds uh, one, two, and three from IOD. And I use my little scraper there, which is your basically for your transfers. And now I have two other molds there. That's the Annette and the Chantel. And those are from uh, Redesign. And on these I'm using the resin. And this is a, a quick resin that sets up within 10, around 10 minutes. I I do like using the casting on these very delicate molds, and that's why I'm doing that instead of the clay. So I'm going to wait for that to set up. And this is a project we're going to be using it on. And I am going to be using primarily two different colors today. One is sea glass, which is what you see right now, and it's a beautiful green color. And I am painting, um, this is a cabinet door that I got at a garage sale, believe it or not, a lady uh, was selling them for 25 cents. So I bought quite a few of them. Wish I'd have bought more. And now I'm using a Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg and that is gonna be the other color we'll be using. That is what we're gonna be painting our teapot. And I'm going to do one full coat of this and let it dry. And this is over the uh, dried uh, slick stick. And it does cover really well, but honestly, I kind of felt like the, uh, the paint did just as well. As far as longevity, I'm not really sure. I mean, it may last longer. So I guess we'll, it, the jury's out. It does take a lot longer to dry. It says to dry it for two hours. So that's something to consider. So now we're gonna move on to my little bird that I also put the slick stick on and paint it the same color, and that is the Vintage Duck Egg. The Vintage Duck Egg, even though it looks very similar to the sea glass, is more of a blue color, and we're kind of doing a, a little blue venue today. So that's mostly what we're gonna be using. So this is my little flower pot I bought I think it was about six of them on Amazon. 
I don't know that there was a better price than anywhere else. I just decided to buy them from them. And what I'm doing there is I am just putting my tight bond glue on there all along the rim because that's where we're going to be adding our first mold. And I'm putting that all the way around the edge and it's wider than the rim. So I'm going to go around the bottom and push it under to kind of make it curve on there. And I'm going to go ahead and coat this with uh, the, the vintage duck egg. And I do that to help avoid some of the cracking of the, uh, the uh, mold while it dries. And the mold that we used right here, that one was, uh, let's see, that was trimmings two. And I cut the, the last piece of trim in half so that I can fit that around the rim of the saucer. These little flower pots came with saucers. Part of the reason why I bought them, I, I wanted the little saucer. So again, I'm going to be painting that uh, to keep it from cracking. So now we're back to the teapot. And I am going to put some salt wash on this. And I'm going to be using my vintage duck egg my paint is pretty thick so I add a little tiny bit of water in there I would have added more paint but the paint was pretty thick by itself so and I just want a light kind of glaze on there of this texture I want this piece to seem like kind of a pottery piece when we're done so I'm putting a light texture on there. So this is my second coat. And I did notice, honestly, some chipping that I normally don't get when I just use the Dixie Belle paint directly on. I usually spray on a primer. So that makes a difference too but I'm using the same amount of paint, so I don't really understand why I see chipping. So I'm using that same salt wash mixture that I have left over on the little bird. And now I am going back to my cabinet door and I'm putting the vintage duck egg in the middle. And now that you see them side by side, you can see the difference in them. You can see the blue and the vintage duck egg is in the middle and the sea glass is on the outside. So if you were thinking about getting those two, you know, if you're wanting a green hue, then you want to go with the sea glass and the blue with the duck egg. So now I am using my bird's mold from IOD and it's called Bird Song. And I also am going to be using the trimmings one I really love the there's one on here that I tend to use a lot and I'm using it right now that is the trimmings one so I'm just pulling off a little extra pieces and I'm gonna have to make quite a few of those I think a total of six I'm putting my cornstarch on. This one's a pretty detailed mold. Sometimes I forget to put it on and already has enough cornstarch on there and I just leave it. So there's a lot of making molds here because I'm gonna be using them on quite a few projects. Uh, I think 
think I made five of those in the end. And I also made several of the birds on the bird song. I did just about all of them except for the two standing birds. So there was a lot of birds. So now I'm taking these molds and I drop one of the uh, molds that I made with the resin, which is fine because you can easily glue them back together. And I do do that. And I'm gonna be using Gorilla uh, Construction Adhesive not to be confused with the uh, the uh, other fast glue. The it's not really super glue, but it's like super glue. I think it's called super glue, or no, I don't remember exactly. But it is gorilla glue, and it is well, yeah, they do call it super glue. Super glue gel XL. And I do use that occasionally when I need things to set uh, quickly. Then I will use that. But most of the time I use the Gorilla Glue. It works really well. So I'm putting the two uh, larger pieces on first because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to put these other pieces on. And then we're just going to kind of work around that. I know I'm going to use it to go around this like a frame. I actually love using these cabinet doors because they're flat. And then you get to play with all your molds and put all these different castings on. And I've done one that I layered, I believe, three different trimmings mold on there and it looks really amazing so I'm putting this on and it has kind of a I don't know leafy kind of look to it and I think it'll go well with these other two that's why I kind of picked it and I cut this off at the edge with my exacto knife and put it on and then I end up changing my mind it doesn't really look right. It looks too precise and not as whimsical and flowy as the other uh, pieces. So I end up trimming those to kind of uh, go with the, the leaf uh, cutout of the mold. And it actually, I think, ends up looking a lot better. The one thing that kind of threw me off a little bit is that if you look at the mold on top, it is not symmetrical. It's not the same. So I was kind of trying to line it up that way. And it really doesn't line up because it's not, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same uh, things on each side. So it did throw me off. And it, I, I think I'm off a little bit on top when I get done, but it, it still looks pretty good. So. And I'm just using my quick and thick tight bond when something's flat and I'm not too worried about it sliding. I don't use my Gorilla construction glue because it's way more expensive than the quick and thick. So I use the quick and thick whenever it's a flat surface and I'm not worried about sliding. Or for instance, I did it on that pot on the trim because of of the way I put that trim on there, I didn't think there was sliding would be an issue. And plus it was very porous. So I, I, I kind of use my glues uh, accordingly. You know, I would use the Gorilla Glue probably on everything, except it is a lot more expensive, so. And I have used Arlene's Tacky Glue, and it works to me just as well as the Quick and Thick. So if that's what you have, then use it. If you've got a, a good white glue, I think it'll, it'll work just as well. But you have to be aware that if you're putting it on a surface that it might slide, that, that's always an issue. That's why the Gorilla uh, construction adhesive works better, because it, it sticks within five minutes it's it's you know it's usually not going anywhere 
And if you really want it to stick quickly, then you put a few drops. That's why I use the super glue gel. I mix the two and I will get, uh, I use both of them if I'm worried about sliding. But on this piece, that's not the case. And so what I'm doing there is I'm just cutting it uh, with the leaf form on there. I'm just cutting out the pieces so that they fit Instead of just a blunt square, I don't want just that blunt look on there. I think that this will look a lot better. And I cut it, but I just didn't cut it back far enough, so I'm going to do it again. And I do go with a wet paintbrush after and kind of smooth off all the edges that I cut. So I glue that down and I let it sit, and now I'm back at my teapot. And we are going to be gluing down um, all of our molds from the bird song. And we're using three birds on here. And I am going to be using this gorilla construction. You hear me talk about glue a lot, but it makes a big difference. If you haven't ever tried uh, doing this on a surface like this, it, gets, it, it can get difficult. Somewhere in there I lost a wing, but I put it back together. So then I'm putting the other two uh, smaller birds on there. And these are going to be on one side because they're smaller. And I do clean out the teapot and everything later, but this is going to only be used for like a planter, so it's not going to be used for food. I wasn't using it anyway. I picked this up at a garage sale, I think, for 50 cents or something, and I thought, no, actually it was at a thrift store. Now one thing that you have to be careful is that on those molds that you press them down and make sure they're making contact with everything and make sure you have glue all the way to the edges because the edges will dry out and curl up. So you want to have glue to the edges of where, wherever the mold is and make sure that you, it's a, it's a fine dance between pushing too hard on the mold and messing up the image and making sure it adheres. So you have to kind of find a happy medium in between those two. You do have to press hard enough that the image is making good contact, but you don't want to mess up your mold at the same time. I usually like to let them sit out a little bit if I can before I try and put them on. So now what I'm doing is I am going over my entire, uh, I'm going to call it a picture frame now, picture frame with the sea glass. This is the second coat. I am not adding any salt wash to this. I usually add salt wash when I use molds, but only when I do it on a curved surface. And I do that because it's almost impossible to get your, your molds to uh, adhere perfectly and there'll be like a little gap on a, a curved sur surface. So I usually add a little salt wash if it's curved, but if it's not, I don't. And what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my uh, vintage duck egg and going over my molds that I put on with the, uh, the teapot and the flower pot. I let them sit for a little bit with the glue before I do that, and that's what I was doing. That's why I had gone back to the frame. I do my uh, videos in the order that I'm doing them because I let things dry as I'm doing them. So that's how it works. I usually do several things at one time. I don't have the time to go back and forth to each individual video. So now what you see that I'm doing is I am painting my
my tray uh, that we did and it was originally um, painted with a slick stick and I am using both colors on this vintage decade and and uh, sea glass but I'm using the duck egg on the outside and I'm using the sea glass on the inside, the opposite of what we're doing on the, the picture frame. And I will be painting the bottom, but for right now, what I'm gonna be doing is attaching these little feet and they have been primed and I'm putting my Gorilla Construction Glue and my Super Glue on, I just put a couple drops of the super glue on each of these feet and I'm just going to place them on there and let it let, let it dry like that so it'll stick on there pretty good right away I used to always use hot glue and I found that sometimes the hot glue uh, will keep the uh, construction adhesive from adhering so I kind of like the Gorilla Glue. The Gorilla Glue helps it adhere and stays permanently. And I don't have to worry about it being, it's the bulkiness of the, the hot glue that sometimes you'll have too much hot glue and, and your other glue won't adhere. So I put those three on and I'm gonna let that sit. Now, this is an interesting project here. I bought this at a garage sale, and I bought three of them for $10. And I'm this is the first one I'm taking apart, and I'm untwisting this little metal thing right there. And then you untwist it all, and it was actually very easy to take apart. And so now I have a cloche. So I, had, I have three of them for very cheap, and those are expensive to buy. So now I have this other mold out and that is what I'm going to be using on the top of this cloche because they made it into a light. There's a hole. And that is the uh, Rosettes IOD. Or IOD Rosettes. And I'm using again my construction adhesive and I will be using a little bit of the super glue. I'm going to put that right on top. And I'm doing it wet because obviously it's it's, you know, very curved. And I wouldn't be able to do it any other way. Now I thought about using one of the smaller molds on top which I think would have worked to plug that hole up and I may do that on one of the others so I'm gonna just kind of center it and kind of smush it down and get it to go all the way around Make sure it's making contact with the glass. And then I found this cute little bird. And I glued it on top with some of the super glue. And now I'm going over it with uh, just the uh, clear coat of Dixie Belle. Because I don't want my uh, mold to crack too much. And plus it's a primer, so the bird was ceramic. So I'm going to let that dry. And now what I'm doing is I am going over my other bird, my blue bird, let's call it, with a clear coat of the uh, Dixie Bell black clear coat. I'm doing that because I will be uh, waxing it. And I'm also doing that on our little riser. 
just putting a clear coat on there. So you can see, really see the difference of those colors when they're side by side. So now that my clear coat's dried, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to go over my bird with white wax. Get it in all the little crevices. And then I take a, a wet wipe, and it is wet. And I actually probably take off 80% of what I put on. But whenever you do a salt wash, it leaves a texture. And that's part of the reason I do that, is that that, that wax will grab anywhere where there's texture. And it gives it, I think, a really cool look. And I just wipe it off, put it on until I get it to where I like it. And then I just let it dry and move on to the next thing that I need to do. But I really love how, I never could understand the whitewash until I used it the first time. And I really like it. I think he looked pretty good. So now I have this stamp that I bought off of Amazon. And I am going to stamp the middle of our riser with it. It's two birds. And I make pretty good contact with that and the stamp turns out good, but I do end up distressing it later. And then I, I don't know, I kind of regret it. We'll see. I, w I didn't want a very just black look on there like that. I wanted it to be more distressed. So I took my wipe, which you can do on a permanent ink, and go through and I, I pressed, I wiped off a lot and I distressed quite a bit of it off. And I probably should have left it alone. So I did that, quite a bit of it. I just didn't want it to be so stark. And I probably should have left it at that point, but then I decided to get some sandpaper and to scuff it up a little bit. And that's probably where I overdid it. So anyway, in the end, I think it looks pretty good. I did take some white wax. And of course I white waxed all of this riser the same process and again I did seal this so I can pull back as much wax as I need to so now I'm doing the back and I will go all over the entire piece And I use the Folk Art uh, Home Decor Wax, white wax. And now I'm wiping it off. And I actually leave quite a bit on because I really want that kind of cloudy look with the uh, stamp. I probably should have used a gray, I think, or even a brown. I think the black is too stark for the colors. So I get that all done and let it dry and then we move on to the teapot and on the teapot what I'm doing is making some more salt wash and this time I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker. I'm going to be using this basically to put near all my molds. I usually do that as I said earlier whenever I have 
a mold that I placed on something curved because there's usually a little gap. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put that and fill in all the edges. I try not to go too much directly on the mold unless there's like a crack or something. And this one actually had some cracks in it. I think where the tail fell off and a wing was bent or something. And the good thing about using that salt wash or a texture mixture in general is that what it'll do is it will fill in all those little cracks. And I'm using a smaller brush now so I can get in the little detailed areas. And I also use it to pull any salt wash off of the detailed uh, molds that I don't want to have the salt wash on, you know, to take away too much of the definition. And then what I do is I just kind of blend out the whole thing. So now I've moved on to my little flower pot and I'm doing the same thing with those molds. I've actually thinned out the salt wash a little bit. I'm not putting it on quite as, quite as thick here. I am filling in all the little gaps. To me, what it does, it makes it look more like the mold has been carved into the piece rather than just stuck on there. So that's why I pretty much do it anytime I use a curved item. Do a curved item, rather. And I do the whole thing and I go ahead and put the salt wash on the entire pot. I even go over the mold on top and I also go on the inside. So now all I'm doing is I am sanding off any extra, and after it's dry, of course, uh, extra salt wash that I put on my teapot because I did do it rather thick and very textured. And sometimes what happens is you have these little peaks and I like to sand that off and make it a little bit smoother. I don't like it quite that rough. And I'm just using 220 grit sandpaper and kind of lightly going over the whole thing. I clean it off really good. And then I go in and I take the Dixie Bell clear coat and I go over the whole thing. Because you guessed it, we're going to put a white wax on it. And I actually use a very liberal amount, probably more than I should, but it does really, really do soak into that, uh, the paint. So it works as a good sealer for the paint. And then also it allows me to put the white wax on. And I'm just doing my little planter with the, the uh, clear coat, just like I did with the other one. And now I'm going to go and put a final clear coat over this plate. Even though I did put wax on it, I want, I usually always put a clear coat, especially on uh, anything that's a tray or a riser. And I'm going to put a clear coat on my little bird. I like to do that. So now I'm going to go back to my frame. And this is a little, I'm not going to say it's a transfer. Honestly, it's more like a sticker. But I guess a transfer is technically a sticker. I got it in Timu, off of Timu. I actually did not order it. And I tried to find it again, and I couldn't find it. They sent it in the order as like an extra present or something. And it's just really one big sticker. And what I'm doing now is I'm cutting off the white paper so that I can really tell where it would go on here. And it was bent when I got it. I didn't bend it. So it was really not in too good a shape. If you've ever gotten anything from TV, their packaging has a lot to be desired. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my bone folder. This is after I've kind of cut it off as close as I can to get it where I need it. And then I'm going to go ahead and this tells me where I need to cut to fit that on there. It doesn't quite fit. I have to trim it in a couple places. Now the tricky part to this is figuring out how to get it off of there and get it on. And um, anyway, that was kind of the thing. In the end, I decide just to take the entire sticker off and then just kind of start on the bottom. And I ended up just putting like the very bottom piece on and then moving my way over. And then when I got done, I just uh, you did it just like you would a transfer and uh, burnished it on. And now all I'm doing is putting a clear coat over my entire project because I am going to white wax this frame and I haven't done that but I'm not going to be doing the middle part but I do want to seal in the uh, transfer sticker so I'll just do that all over and then let that dry so now I've got my uh, folk art wax again and I'm going to be going over my teapot and again I'm going to go in all the little crevices and details and do whatever and the one thing you will notice on this piece is that because it's heavily salt washed it does grab a lot of the salt wash which I wanted but I'm just saying you'll know you'll notice a little difference and I usually go over my molds first because I want them to dry a little bit more and then I go over the rest of it usually after so now I'm I'm starting to remove the wax and I'm going to be using a wet wipe and going through the same process and you'll see that it is catching a lot more. So I have to, you know, be a little bit careful and make sure I get more of it out of all the little crevices and things like that so that I don't have too much in there. So after I get all of that done and um, most of the wax removed that I wanted, or all of it really, I let that dry and I move on to my little planter and we're going to do the same thing here kind of boring but it's part of the process so we're going to do the same thing go over all the molds on top and also the little saucer and then we'll wipe it all back So now we'll go ahead and after we're done with taking all the wax off of that, we'll let it dry and then we'll move on to our last project. Again, we're going to use the white wax and this time you'll get to at least see it on a different color. So this will be on the uh, sea glass and I'm going to be trying really hard not to get it on the uh, vintage duck egg. But if I do, I've already put a sealer on there so it should wipe off easily and actually I do get some on there and I do wipe it off pretty easily and it came in handy that I had the sealer so anyway that's kind of how this is going to go and it's not hard to wipe out of there there is a lot of detail to the castings that I did on top and on the bottom and I do take a little paintbrush out and go in there and get all a lot of that out where they're was accumulated too much wax so then the very last thing that I do is I go ahead and I paint my cloche with um, just some Dixie Belle buttercream 
and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing and the bird I want it to kind of look like it's all one piece and go over all of it and I also end up getting a very fine brush at the end even though this one's pretty small but I uh, there's like a little lip of where the mold hits the glass and even though I get some on the glass, you can always take it off. But I do that so that I can get uh, the little parts underneath that you can't, y'all can't see. So, and I'm gonna let that dry, and then we will move on to our very next step, which is we're gonna go ahead and paint these little eggs. These are. Uh, eggs that I got from the Dollar Tree. They're styrofoam and they're kind of glittery, but they're styrofoam. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint them with the buttercream. And I'm just doing one coat. It covers it pretty good. And what you don't see here is after they dry, I do take the same antiquing liquid that I use for the top of my cloach with my fan brush and I just speckle some dots on it to make them look a little bit more realistic but I just forgot to record that so you're gonna see that later and it, I, I think they look pretty legit when they're done so anyway that's all I do is I paint all three of those and let them dry and we're gonna be using those in our little vignette so now I'm just going to take my vintage photo and I'm going to be putting it in a mixture I already had of the Dixie Belle clear coat, but I'm making it a little bit darker because I want to add this to the top of my cloche and that is where we put the mold and the bird and I had already put the uh, buttercream on there and it's dry. So if you don't have a, a wax or if you don't have a, a stain, you can take your clear coat and, you know, you can definitely make it into a stain. And it's to me, it's a two for two. You're actually stealing it and staining it all at one time. So I am going to be wiping off a lot of this, but I wanted it to have kind of a vintage look. I mean, you know, not look too new. So that's the last of our projects, guys. And I really thank you for stopping by and watching my video. I know it was long, but we had quite a few projects. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks.